Hello there. Have you made your discipleship quota today? Why would I ask that? Why are you asking that, Butch? Check this out. Matthew 23, 8. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and say this one before I read the next verse. It is best to whole, read the whole chapter of Matthew 23. But to save some time, I'm kind of keeping to the point. And call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father, which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters. For one is your master, even Christ. But be he, but excuse me, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. I wonder why that's not true with the Roman Catholics. I wonder why that's not true with a lot of Protestant churches, even some Baptist churches. Mm. You know, all these churches out here that claim, you know, we're all God's children. Okay, well... God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, said it here plainly in verses Matthew, Matthew 23, verses 8, and way on down the whole chapter, really, that we're on equal ground. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled. They will be abased. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. So, if the Catholic cardinals and bishops and the Pope whoever were truly children of God and I pray that they are I pray for them and us being Protestants some of us Protestants and being Baptists or whatever um, of the Baptist faith um, shouldn't we be um, even though we're some of us are called to be pastors some of us are called I think it's in Hebrews 5 I think it is 513 was it 23 some of us are called to be apostles evangelists pastors teachers preach you know what have you but we're all meant to be on equal footing as parts of the body and no one part of the body exalting itself over another I believe the Bible also talks about that yeah, it does actually I forget where we're at exactly but um you see have have you made your quota in discipleship training it a day because there's a lot of people out there who think well I got to teach somebody about the basics I got to give them this I got to give them that and Paul says so much about teaching and teachers and so the other the apostles here uh, pretty much if you go here to Matthew chapter 10 uh, verse 24 this is what it says here verse 24 and 25 it says him the disciple is not above his master nor the servant above his lord it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his lord so going back to verse um, chapter 23 um, so Paul even says something about imitating right so let's look at that word and see what it says imitate imitate sorry thought I put it in there if it, so if we imitate what is that and what's another word for imitate copy right so shouldn't we copy um uh, hang on one second here in Hebrews chapter 6 12 we got it like this uh, that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit promises the promises uh, 1 Corinthians 4.16 wherefore I beseech you ye be ye followers of me Paul says be ye followers of me even as I also am of Christ 1 Corinthians 11.1 1. Ephesians be ye therefore followers of God as dear children 
Philippians 3.17, Brethren, be ye followers together of me, and mark them which so walk so as ye have us for an example. Excuse me, for an example. And that was Philippians 3.17, First Thessalonians 1, six, And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. First Thessalonians 2.14, For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. Hebrews 6.12 That ye be not... Oh, I already, already had that one. Uh, let's see here. First Peter 3.17 And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? Now, um, of all that being said, what's the need of having disciples? Ship training, rather. Because if you're a disciple, how can you make another disciple? It's not that, that's not what it says in God's word. You know? So why has so if someone makes a disciple, that means that person has to be over that disciple that they're making. And when you look when you look at it as to what it says in God's word in Matthew twenty three, verses eight and two all the way down whole whole chapter, you can't make disciples. Only God can make disciples. Only the Father, only the Son can make disciples through the power of the Holy Spirit. So if it's the same thing like with um, karate and jujitsu and taekwondo and all that stuff. There are teachers there to teach the art of that that particular art. I'm saying that because I took it for me and my son, and they and the, he is the master instructor. Now there are also other instructors, but they are not the master instructor. So therefore, even though the, though they are instructors, they're teachers, they are not the master, because there's only one master, right? So they they can and um, they cannot uh, 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 make you a uh, um, a student. You know what I mean? They cannot make you a disciple. The one that makes you a disciple is the one who is the master instructor, who is teaching those who are higher up in rank and those who are lower in rank. But they, he uses other students to help teach. But he himself is the master instructor, and he himself is the one that makes disciples. So it's the same thing with the Lord Jesus Christ and our faith and our I'll come into salvation. There's only one who is teaching. There's only one who is an instructor. But he uses many others to teach and instruct. But they don't make disciples. He makes disciples by his Holy Spirit. What he's done for us on the cross. Him dying for our sins. He made that for us to be disciples. To be some of us to be apostles, some of us to be prophets, some of us to be evangelists, some of us to be teachers, preachers, what have you. Different parts of the body. No one higher than the other. As it said, um, those who are, are exalt themselves will be abased. Those who um, humble themselves will be exalted. Um, chapter 23, verse 12 of Matthew. So um, it goes for that goes for the Pope. That goes for a cardinal, a bishop, that goes for a pastor, that goes for anyone with a master of divinity behind their name or whatever. It doesn't matter who you are. If you are a true child of God, if you are saved by salvation by the blood of Jesus Christ, you're on equal footing with everybody. God has no respect of persons. He doesn't see you higher than somebody else. Just because they're because you're a pastor, or because you're an elder, or because you're a deacon, and if you're a Roman Catholic, if you're in any other religion or some religion, he doesn't see the Pope as some holy father. He doesn't see a cardinal as an eminence, or bishops, or what have you. He sees this, just them as regular men, because they are nothing but little ants before his eyes. We are nothing but ants before him, even lower than ants. But for those of us who respect and love and cherish God, 
the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, He exalts us. Those of us who want to humble ourselves before Him, He exalts us. But for any of us who think we're all that in a bag of chips, we're great pastors, we're great teachers, we're great scholars, we're great, great theologians, and we're making bukus a bunch of money off of writing books and all that and the other, and we think we know it all, have all the answers. When we think we're something where we're not, as Paul says, we're really, we're really nothing. So we better be careful about that. Have you made your disciple today? Well, no, you shouldn't be making no disciples. You can't make a disciple. Only Jesus Christ can make a disciple concerning the faith. Now, if you go and get martial arts training, you know, that's a different story. <laughs> you know, you, you have to be one master as opposed to different students and stuff. But, um, you know, uh, John had disciples. Pharisees had disciples in the Bible. But when it comes to the faith of Jesus Christ, there's only one master. You know, we know who that is. And um, another disciple cannot make another disciple. It cannot be over that disciple. Now, there's, I mean, I had a guy, um, whenever I first got saved, he was like a mentor to me and everything. And I kind of felt like, you know, because he was a martial arts instructor to me that he was mentoring me. But really, I shouldn't even thought that. But, you know, when I was younger, I thought all kinds of stuff. He, he was just another brother showing me the way of faith. And that's the way it should have been. And um, he was also a master instructor in Taekwondo. There was a problem there. But I didn't realize, realize it until, you know, two you know years later. And um, I also was going to a karate school of late. And uh, me and my son were going, and he was a master instructor. And some of the things that he taught, eventually I didn't agree with. And I didn't want my son going back. And eventually I caved back in, and we started going again. Then I took him out again, and I was like, no, I'm never going back. Because I want my son to learn things of the true master, and not someone with... A, a belt tied around the waist it was like a, something with a martial art or self defense I want my son to know the true defense the, from the true master and that's from Jesus Christ being that he is to his rock and shield and he is his everything he is his defender he doesn't need to be going to a man learning self defense and neither do I I need to go to the man for my defense and so does he my son we go to the man, Christ Jesus. We don't go. We don't go to any other man to be discipled. And if we, if we, if we keep having these things and like discipleship, ship training, this, what does that? What does that say to other people? You know what I mean? What does it say? It says to me, we're not reading our Bible. The Christ is our rock, our shield. That He's our defense. Vengeance is his. He will repay. Wherever we are, he is our defense. He has angels all around us. We're not fighting any things against we're not fighting against flesh and blood here. It's a principality in high places, as the Bible says. But anyway, so therefore, if we are to be a Christ, we should be imitators, as Paul said. We should be followers, right? We should be those who um, follow Jesus Christ. And if we're going to follow anyone, or any person, or any people, we need to be following those who follow Christ. So that way we're imitating them who imitate Christ. So we're copying ourselves after those who copy Christ. Therefore, we are copying Christ. So we're staying pure to the Word. So that's the same it goes with... um for pastors. Pastors need to be copying and emulating imitating Jesus Christ when they preach to us. Right? Because they are a representative. They are ones who are supposed to imitate him. And they have a leadership role. And that leadership role is not to make himself bigger. It's to point the way. It's to point the way to Jesus Christ. It's not to point the way to himself. 
It's to say that this is the way you follow ye in it. He's the way. You know what I mean? It's not about how he looks in front of the congregation, the church, or the elders, or the deacons. And we see the, a total reversal of what the Pope is doing, what the cardinals are doing, what the bishops, his bishops are doing. He sees himself as the vicar of Christ. The cardinals see themselves as some big shots. The, the, the bishops, I'm sure some of them are nice. But really, they're just men. They're men. That's all they are. And we shouldn't exalt other people. We shouldn't exalt men over men. Not at all. I mean, anybody over anybody. But anyway, we should be imitators, followers and imitators of Jesus Christ. And staying pure. But whenever we get another man in our life, whenever we are, you know, who's teaching one thing, and then you got somebody else and he's hearing another, all that stuff, where people are getting over another and then here you come with like with like with the same thing with different different Bible versions. People are hearing one thing, people are hearing another because somebody wants to rule over another one, or because they want to get money off of something they write or put or an idea that they have, and some of them don't even know what they're doing. They don't even realize they're um, uh, not staying pure to God's word. They just think they're preaching that they're this because they got this master of divinity or some kind of a bachelor's degree or something after their name or what have you or some some thing they earn at a seminary or Bible college. They think they're all that in a bag of chips. Some of them do. Not all of them, I know. But, you know, I think you understand what I'm saying, hopefully. So, have you made your disciple today? You ought to be asking, has Jesus Christ made a disciple today? See you later.